girl allegedly killed by her own father is laid to rest. And tonight, the baby's mother talks to News 10. Good evening, everyone. I'm Siani Lee. And I'm Tim Lake. Our top story on News 10 at 11. The mother of four-year-old or four-month-old Alexandria Russell speaks out about her baby's murder. This comes the same day memorial services were held for the child. More tonight from News 10's Mike Strug. The streets of Medford are quiet, but there is still a sense of shock and dismay in this town. A memorial service filled the funeral home here on Main Street to hear a grieving young mother eulogize her four-month-old daughter. Allie would want us to smile. After all, she would be smiling at us, cooing in her baby talk maybe reaching out to grab our fingers or our hair. As family and friends sat silently, Holly Klein remembered her daughter. After the service, she reread the eulogy for the cameras. Married just a year and a half, the 24-year-old, who has returned to her maiden name since her husband, Matthew Russell, was charged with their daughter's murder, says she saw no sign of impending trouble. In my presence, Matthew was always a good and a loving father. He cared about Ellie very much. He wrote letters about her to me. We made plans for her future. I never saw it coming, no. Police Chief Stephen McGarvey couldn't offer an explanation either. I know that there's been uh, research done by, uh, you know, many, many different people, and they haven't come up with that answer why uh, a crying baby would make an adult do something like this. Earlier in the day, Matthew Russell, in a bright orange prison jumpsuit surrounded by police, was allowed to pay his final respects. Friday, he was charged with the murder and held in lieu of $200,000 bail. The man that I knew and the man that I loved and married must be a different person. Holly Klein says the remains of four-month-old Alexandria will be cremated. And then, come spring, they'll be spread under a white rose bush. In Midford, I'm Mike Strug, News 10. Police are investigating a double homicide at a West Philadelphia sandwich shop. News 10 at 60th and Cedar at Global Produce Steaks and Hoagies. 20-year-old Keith Fields died at the scene from a gunshot wound to the back of the head. 18-year-old James Elliott was shot in the back and died at the hospital. Tonight, police are still interviewing witnesses and no one has been charged. Philadelphia police are also investigating the death of 73-year-old Amelia Oblu. Her body was discovered in the 3200 block of Mercer Street in Port Richmond. Concerned relatives called police and neighbors tell News 10 Oblu was last seen in front of her home on Thursday. They say she lived alone but did have tenants in the building. Police have no suspects or motives in this case. And tonight, police in Bucks County have not released the name of the man whose body was found in the Delaware River this afternoon. Authorities discovered the victim in the river behind the USX steel plant in Falls Township. The county coroner believes the man was a fisherman who died within the past 24 hours. New details now about legal strategy in the Grossberg-Peterson murder case. Amy Grossberg apparently plans to blame her sweetheart for dumping their newborn son into a trash bin. Grossberg and 19-year-old Brian Peterson have pleaded not guilty to the crime, which happened in November of 1996. Tests show the baby died from severe head trauma, but new court documents reveal Grossberg will claim the baby was stillborn and then dumped by Peterson. Peterson is expected to use the same defense. Grossberg's attorneys want a separate trial. A plumbing contractor recovers in a hospital tonight after being buried in an eight-foot deep trench that collapsed on top of him. This all happened in the 1800 block of Wakeling Street, where workers were installing new sewer pipes today. George Lindsay was trapped for two hours while fire department crews worked to free him. Yeah, we were worried about a secondary collapse. Um, he, uh, he had air. He had, it was in an air pocket, so uh, he was in pretty good shape that way. But we just wanted to make sure nothing else fell in before we got him out. Tonight, Lindsay is in stable condition. City inspectors are looking into the cause of the collapse. In the White House sex scandal investigation, President Clinton's close friend and advisor, Vernon Jordan, is set to testify before a grand jury on Tuesday. Jordan, a Washington, D.C. lawyer, will tell what he knows about former White House intern Monica Lewinsky. Jordan admits helping Lewinsky get job interviews and a lawyer. Jordan denies using his influence to get Lewinsky to lie or change her testimony in the Paula Jones case. Special Prosecutor Kenneth Starr is working hard all this weekend for the big week ahead. We're moving forward very quickly on the substance of this investigation. Still no word tonight on when and if Lewinsky, the central figure in this investigation, will take the stand. Lewinsky allegedly told a close friend she and the president had a sexual relationship. The president denies it.
Meanwhile, the president is in Los Angeles tonight meeting with victims of California's El Nino storms. He told them Americans are praying for tranquil weather so the rebuilding can begin. He also promised federal funds for victims. Mr. Clinton shortened his weekend ski vacation in Utah to visit the West Coast. And severe weather moves into Florida again just days after a series of deadly tornadoes. An eerie sky loomed over Deerfield Beach on the Atlantic coast near Boca Raton. Strong winds knocked down trees and damaged homes and kept rescue crews scrambling from one troubled spot to another. There was one unconfirmed tornado sighting. More threatening storms in central Florida as well, where they are still trying to recover from last week's string of twisters. Thunderstorms hit the disaster area hard again with heavy rain, lightning, hail and high winds. The area is so saturated now, flash floods are a concern. And relatives and friends of an eight-month-old boy said their farewells today. One of last week's twisters ripped little Niles David Bork from his father's arms. Several other storm victims were buried today. Forty people are now known to have perished in last week's devastating string of tornadoes. A wayward plane is lost over the Atlantic Ocean. Electronics are broken. The pilot has no way to tell which way he's flying. Suddenly, two warplanes float up alongside him. Well, this all sounds like a movie, but it really happened early this morning off the Jersey Shore. The twin-engine plane that was lost over the Atlantic Ocean is now safe in a hangar near Atlantic City. Electrical failure meant the pilot had no radio and no navigational electronics like compass and altimeter. He couldn't see land, uh, so he couldn't guide himself by uh, visual cues on the ground. So he was, again, 150 miles out over the ocean uh, with no possible way to determine where landfall was. To the rescue flew two F-16 jets like these from the New Jersey Air National Guard. They flew out over the ocean, found the wayward plane, and flashed their lights, a signal to follow them back to Atlantic City. The lost pilot was said to be real happy to be back, real happy to be alive. Well, the pilot of that wayward plane was flying from Rochester, New York, to North Jersey. If not for those F-16s, he probably, they say, would have run out of gas and crashed into the ocean. Mm, lucky, lucky guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Much more still ahead on News 10 tonight at 11. Princess Diana's bodyguard comes forward with new details about the accident that claimed her life. Also, a bizarre standoff comes to an end when a millionaire finally gives up his mansion. And remember Nancy and Tanya and Dan and Bonnie? News 10's Larry Menti takes us back to Lillehammer to show us an Olympics to remember four years later. Glenn? I'm glad Schwartz in the Weather Center. Ending up February, one of the warmest ever, but the first week of March shows some changes. That's coming up in the Earthwatch forecast as News 10 continues. You're watching News 10 at 11. Considering where you usually drive, which makes more sense? An off-road vehicle or the quintessential on-road vehicle? The all-wheel drive cross-country. Decide for yourself on our website. Serve safely. You have a telephone number, a credit card number, a fax number, a pager number, a checking account number. Isn't it about time you had a number for freedom? Jeep Cherokee. With rugged good looks, shift on the fly, four-wheel drive, and a four-liter engine, it's the number you've been looking for. Now lease Cherokee for $279 a month and get all this at no extra charge. Check one out at your Jeep dealer. How's your sex life? I beg your pardon? You know, your sex life. What kind of question is that? It's a question that's part of a revealing test that can tell you how long you'll live. And my sex life is part of that? You better believe it. Okay, where can I take this test? Watch News 10 at 11 this Monday night. News 10's Larry Menti puts you to the test. How long will you live? Monday night on News 10 at 11. Volvo introduces a welcome alternative to vehicles designed to go off-road. A vehicle designed to stay on it. The all-wheel drive cross-country. Visit our website to learn more about it. Serve safely. You're watching News 10 at 11. Despite a few sprinkles out there, people are out and about on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. News 10 in University City tonight. Glenn Hurricane Shorts is coming up with details of a cool change in the exclusive Earthwatch forecast in just a few minutes. 
Residents of a Wisconsin village have been evacuated from their homes tonight after a huge propane gas explosion. A car crashed into the 30,000 gallon tank, triggering the Let blast. me stand up with your pants. Let me see if I can get excited over you. Let me see. You, you want to get excited? I mean, you now you're get way it. too heavy. You couldn't get excited I couldn't. over her. Could you have sex with her? Oh, Jackie yes, could, because Jackie's yeah. into fat chicks. Jackie's right. gone way past. Yeah, Jackie, you've done worse than this, right? <laughs> way, way in the past. I, I, you know. oh, 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 your standards have improved. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. Who do you think you are, Howard? You're not like Arsenio Hall. Or... <laughs> no, I'm not. I have a job. <laughs> You're no stud. Yeah, but believe me, you want it. I've never seen a girl who looks like that be fat like that. I know, because she has how, a great how face. I, how could I want it? I haven't seen it. I don't purchase anything I haven't worn. No. She's naked. She's still wearing a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Stand up. Let me look. You getting excited over her, Ralph? Yeah. Are you, Billy? Yeah. You are? Yeah. She's down in bra and panties. You don't see how much butt is hanging out over here. Stand up. Stand up. Let me look well, at you. Let me see. That? Take it all off and let me stand up. Let me see. I'm not taking off anything. Well, your bra is off. No, it's not. Well, there's just something about the way she kind of like moves and she's kind of like... You know what she's doing? She's down here to upset her husband. Again. I got to admit, I'm aroused right now. She's very sexy. I'm aroused. She's so sexy. I'm aroused. She's so zexy. She's so zexy. My, my she... husband and I are separated. Are you really? I'm officially aroused. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Watching some nasty, nasty weather in Florida tonight after a very active day, to say the least. Good evening. I'm Paul Emick. And I'm Sharon Rizalton. It is bitterly cold in the meantime into the northern plains. And if you live in the northeast, well, it looks like your Sunday is going to be a gray day, too. We're going to have details on that in just a moment. But we'll first start with the thunderstorms in Florida. We'll show you some scenes from some damage earlier today in and around Deerfield Beach. The South Florida residents are assessing the damage from this afternoon's thunderstorms. High winds ripped through the Deerfield Beach area this afternoon, causing damage to trees and some homes in the area. Well, that's a look a little bit further southward. Now, I did want to point out that earlier on, we had a few pop-up thunderstorms across southern portions of Florida. And uh, that, in combination with some pretty strong winds aloft, did create enough to do some damage here and actually produce a tornado. That was earlier today. But the main thrust of the thunderstorms has been here across uh, central portions of Florida uh, in the vicinity of a stationary front. And that's exactly where we're seeing some of the action yet again this evening. As a matter of fact, much of the peninsula could see some severe weather as we go through the next several hours, but there is one minute area here, one uh, confined area where the severe or actually the tornado watch is in effect from the Tampa Bay region to points on southward reaching down toward the Fort Myers area. So this is the region that we're watching out for where conditions are favorable for the production of tornadoes. 
possibility there, and we'll keep an eye on that for you. I mentioned a stationary front, and there's the front. And the situation is such that we're seeing the thunderstorms developing along and just to the south of this front, and they continue to push off to the northeast at about 40 miles per hour. So as you can see, all the way back out into the Gulf of Mexico, we continue to see that line of thunderstorms. And it's looking more and more like it's trying to develop along a squall line, that sort of scenario. You'll get a better focus for that as we look at the very latest radar imagery, and there's the line. Did want to mention as we head out toward uh, Daytona Beach, on up to around uh, Mosquito Lagoon, there is a special marine warning in effect and into Volusia County we do have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect as well. The line goes just to the west of Orlando and then back down through the Tampa Bay region and there are some special marine warnings also in effect around Tampa Bay. So we continue to see these storms lining up into the Gulf of Mexico and then pushing on into this region and that is an area that we will continue to watch out for. So that's what it looks like. It's more of a springtime scenario working into Florida. It's more of a wintry scenario up here, and Paul Emick is standing by to give you more details on that. That is right. A lot of green on the northeastern maps tonight, and it's also going to be a very wet Sunday. More wet weather is going to hold on. Tonight we have two big stories throughout the northeast. One of the stories is, of course, the, the snowy stuff. The other is the rain. Let's have a look. There we go. The upper Midwest, we're dealing with an area of low pressure still spinning around here. As that thing continues its spin, we've got snow coming in there. Now, this low pressure is kind of on its own. It's not to seeing any kind of real support or any kind of kick from either the northern polar jet or the southern jet. Not really having a lot of effect on it. It's on its own, literally just sitting here and spinning. Now, the high pressure, because winds blow from high to low, is a big player in the windiness of all the blowing snow tonight. High pressure is going to kind of back up into Canada, literally kind of backing up. That will help to relax our winds a bit, and eventually the system will kind of uh, lose some of its oomph. Still, though, we're dealing with snow tonight. A lot of places, including on Minneapolis, St. Paul, you bet. We've got that going on tonight. Also in Alexandria and Wilmar. Throughout the Dakotas, too, in North Dakota, amazing. Bismarck, still, still snowy. Dickinson as well. Fargo, even Grand Forks. Minot, the Air Force Base, too, we've got snow. Throughout South Dakota, if you're driving 90 or wanting to, it's a, it's a mess as well. Aberdeen, Watertown, Sioux Falls, Huron Pier, Rapid City, you name it, we've got the snow. Of course, some of the most amazing snows have been toward the Black Hills, We've got the elevation there working with it as far as trying to push the moisture up over a mountain. It cools and condenses with height, helps to squeeze out the snow, and really enhance snowfall amounts. Cold air, too. Teens for Bismarck, also for Minot. Wind chill, even for Rapid City, incredibly cold, minus 15. Not much of a wind chill on Rush Street in Chicago, if you're out there, but a little bit on the cool side there. Winds are really kicking here, though. We see, especially here into, uh, on Rapid City, 45-mile-an-hour wind gusts, not out of the question at all. In the northeast, there's still another area of low pressure wrapping in some moisture here and more rain tonight, including around New York City. We've got rain, too, for Watertown, Buffalo, Niagara Falls. And as we look toward White Plains and the city, around JFK, rainy, even toward Boston, we're starting to move more rain in. Hartford, Providence, you name it, it's uh, pretty much wet and sloppy tonight. Also in the parts of PA, around Erie, we've got some of this and even some rain and some reports of thunderstorms popping up on toward Dayton, Ohio. On the West Coast, well, just the only thing to deal with here is still some showers back for the Pacific Northwest into Texas. Could see some freeze problems there. Here's a look at the country. We'll get to the forecast in a minute. Right now with El Nino Focus, here's Sharon. It is ocean and atmosphere working together that makes El Nino a force for climate change. Jim Cantore explains in tonight's El Nino Focus. In normal non-El Nino years, the surface of the Pacific Ocean along the coast of South America is cool, about 8 degrees cooler than the surface in the Western Pacific. That's because of the trade winds. The prevailing trade winds in this part of the world are from east to west, and those winds push the ocean surface along with them. That piles warm water up in the Western Pacific. Sea level is about a foot and a half higher near Indonesia than at Ecuador. And because the surface water is moved west, the cold water from deeper levels rises toward the surface off South America, sometimes to within 50 meters. That's called upwelling, and it's responsible for the cold surface temperatures. But in an El Nino, the trade winds diminish, and in some cases, actually reverse. Without the trade winds, upwelling diminishes. The cold water from the depths remain far below the surface, and the surface warms. So it is this relationship between the wind and the ocean that causes the changes we know as El Nino. I'm Jim Cantori, The Weather Channel. And just a friendly reminder that you can join us every night at this time for El Nino Focus. Now with your forecast, here's for the rest of the weekend, here's Paul. 
Let's do it. Let's wrap up this weekend. Well, here's how it starts off. Not bad around the country as far as bitter cold air. Well, the clouds here will not let you escape a lot of, uh, you know, the, the warmth overnight. We're not going to let the heat fly up into space. We'll keep it close to us with the cloud blanket in place. Like kicking the blanket off at night, you know, you can start to get cold fast. Well, the cloud blanket's holding on and keeping heat close to us here in Florida. And uh, I miss some cool air here, though, with a few clouds still around uh, Detroit, where it hasn't warmed up a lot today. Detroit and Southfield and the southwest temps aren't bad to start it up. Okay, northeast, here's part of our problem. One area of low pressure still cranking it up. You can miss more rain around the city if you want to get around New Rochelle or had plans to go to the park. Some showers. Okay, showers will be around. Same for Boston, same for Hartford. In Florida, getting better, not wetter. That's a good deal. Uh, maybe around Orlando, eventually, we could see some wet weather kicking on. If you want to get around the amusement parks or anything around the International Boulevard, Tampa, St. Pete, looking better, too. Still some snow in Minneapolis. This could be a part of our day, even into Chicago. We could see some snow, maybe a mix of rain and snow. Pacific Northwest, a few showers still popping up. We have to hold on, but eventually we'll bring more rain back towards San Francisco. Heaviest amounts of precipitation, still probably central Florida, with a lot of that uh, due to come down. And the warmth is around South Florida tomorrow. Not bad even toward Philly, but cooler air awaits. Mm -hmm. It certainly does for most everyone. Mm. Well, you are seeing a lot of rain in parts of the Northeast tonight. Get the latest travel conditions for the region and the whole country and travel-wise right after.